स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया वेलकम वंस अगेन टू एन पी थे नेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑन टेक्नोलॉजी एनहेंस लर्निंग बींग ब्रॉट टू यू बाई द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस टूडे द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज डिवेलपमेंट इन रिलेशन टू कल्चर डिवेलपमेंट एज सीन इन कल्चरल स्टडीज सो लेट्स डू अ रिकैप ऑफ वॉट वी हैड डिस्कस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर and you will recall that the last lecture was devoted to time time as seen um in cultural studies time as theorized by cultural studies so um we began with the traditional concepts of time and we saw that time uh, in the traditionalist framework is seen as teleological that is time as having Uh, an end a purpose and things unfold where things unfold events unfold towards a preordained aim or a preordained purpose evolutionary um framework the evolutionary framework is also included under the traditionalist concept uh, at least uh, you know um those aspects of evolutionary theory that see uh, the progress of the species of homo sapiens okay as you know progressing in a linear sort of way and hence linearity is also among uh, the terms that are used within a traditionalist framework if therefore in the traditionalist framework there seems to be uh, you know there seems to be a purpose as to uh, what or as to why time unfolds at all then we saw that fuko michel fuko gives us uh the opposite framework uh, opposite in the sense that there is no teleology here it is non teleological the genealogical uh, method is or is not sees time as non teleological history as seen uh, as haphazard um a haphazard collection so to speak of um entangled events where there are deviations reversals errors and reappraisals where it is not a neat narrative so to speak of time unfolding further um we saw uh, quite in the beginning really where danny cavallero says that there may be three central issues okay to um discussing time within the cultural studies framework and among uh, uh, you know um the most important are these three our grasp of time influences our perception of the world the way you look at time the way we we um, experience time the you know it is uh, it is apparently related or it, it determines our perception of the world the relationship between time and space is also another uh, you know area for exploration exploration within cultural studies and definitely the relationship between time and history so these are you know some of the uh, if not the most er uh, important areas under which time is considered in cultural studies then we also saw zeman and kepozi Zeman and Kaposi uh, say very um, importantly that cultural studies of temporality or the study of time is not concerned with the fundamental characteristics of time okay remember we had said that cultural studies or sorry scientific studies of time may be interested in what the characteristics of time are but in cultural studies we understand or we we wish to understand time in relation to human life activities that is to culture which we saw may be defined as a way of life other questions are for instance how do the past and future affect the present and how is history related to culture we also saw that time may even be textual okay Uh, however difficult it is to understand it in those terms nevertheless time is textual time is a matter of linguistic discourse the description of time the understanding of time ultimately is a linguistic activity this is the theory propounded by the post structuralists we we also we also found that post modernism uh, as a framework or a movement or a school of thought um also looks or uh, problematizes 
time and through Lindia Hutchin we um, we found I am quoting her here we constantly narrate the past but what are the conditions of the knowledge implied by, by what she calls the totalizing act of narration ok. So, there is also an element of power of tyranny if you will if you want to stretch it um, of how we uh, constantly narrate the past but the question is how can the past or how can the present at all know the past that it narrates. So, you see time within cultural studies is highly problematized right by, by cultural theory by so many of the practitioners ok. So, well today the topic of discussion is development uh, as you know development is a uh, topic um, which lends itself to so many interdisciplinary areas it itself is an interdisciplinary topic ok. You can study development from the point of view of sociology from the point of view of economics ok from the point of view even of literature right. So, we uh, in this lesson today we are going to look at development from a cultural studies perspective. Now, as always let me declare the key sources in this lecture from which I will be uh, gleaning the points and from which I shall be also quoting um, from time to time. So, these texts are Vincent Tucker who is an important name in critical development theory. Vincent Tucker is the myth of development a critique of a Eurocentric discourse. The title itself speaks so much and you will by uh, you know already by now I am sure you have an idea of how the discussion today is going to go. We also look at some of uh, you know the features of the world a commission on culture and development and then we look at the critic um, Bhikkhu Pareks a, com a commitment to cultural pluralism development and I, I am bringing in time here you know in a bit to relate uh, the previous lecture to development and then I shall be going on to other aspects of development ok. Critics say that there is a powerful temporal motive right in the discourse of development right. So, let us look at uh, this slide the idea of social time as or in terms of progress right. So, again you will find that in the discourse of development in trying to frame policies on development in trying to understand or even categorize some nations as developed some uh, nations as underdeveloped and others uh, as developing right. Time is an important the temporal motive as it is mentioned here is a very important uh, important uh, you could say determinant right. For instance, social time is understood in terms of progress. So, so that those uh, those nations that are not uh, sort of progressing quote unquote progressing ok in the uh, uh, in the terms of the mainstream discourse of development as we understand it today. Um, as the mainstream discourse understands it today as economic well being ok, uh, infrastructure, infrastructural development right. Uh, some nations are seen as lagging behind in time. So, that the idea the idea of social time is understood in terms of progress ok. Then the second point in this slide uh, development is seen again from a development from times of barbarism to civilization. You will again see the trope of linearity here ok, the trope of progress here. And enlighten the, the understanding of development ok is understood in terms of the enlightenment and modernist understanding of time. The enlightenment and modernist understandings of time are by and large or essentially put the understanding of uh, uh, the understanding of time in terms of development evolution and the linear ok. So, you see how the understanding of time and the understanding of development each informs the, the other. For instance, uh, you know historians and critics like uh, Ranajit Guha or Roberto Schwartz for instance ok have pointed uh, you know uh, to uh, this connection between colonialism and underdevelopment and the way these are theorized right. So, uh, Schwartz for instance holds that the entire framework look at this slide the framework of underdevelopment ok that is how you gauge 
measure or declare a nation or part of the globe as underdeveloped okay, is understood in terms of this is beautifully put cultural and social belatedness. Okay. Now, belated in terms of time, right? as if they as I said uh, a while ago as if they are not uh, keeping in time with the development and progress uh, culturally, socially, economically okay, lagging behind in time as far or as in comparison with uh, the uh, nations that are declared to be developed. Therefore, it is a powerful fiction as some critics say, okay, where different parts of the world exist in different times or phases of belatedness. Look at this phrase, different parts of the world exist in different, we will almost say time zones, not in the way time we understand time zones, but in, in different economic time zones or different socio cultural time zones okay, in terms of development. Therefore, the present for a developing country, the present is always elsewhere, right? They are forever lagging behind, they have to catch up. So, the present in which a developing country lives today is the past of a developed country. That is the framework or that is the powerful motive within which we, the, at least the mainstream discourse of development understand itself understand other you know uh, 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 nations that are both developed and nations that are not developed. Okay? So, you see how time is such an important factor as I said belatedness the very powerful trope or metaphor in the discourse of development. Now, let us look at uh, what the world commission on culture and development in 1992 has to declare. Okay. The World Commission on Culture and Development in 1992 declared that culture may be defined as ways of living together. Okay. Uh, remember, we had defined culture, at least we had said that one of the ways of defining culture is that culture is a way of living. Now, if you look at this slide here, we had stopped at this. We, we had said that culture is ways of living, different cultures have different ways of living right? Every, for everyday life, the social cultural economic arrangements, the political arrangements etcetera right? with of course, uh, more onus on, uh, uh, on cultural practices, everyday practices. Okay? But there is an important addition here together, okay? culture is uh, seen as ways of living together and you will see how this living together in a pluralist, uh, you know, in a pluralist setup, in a globalized pluralist setup, is the onus of, you know, uh, the reports, for instance, given by the World Commission on Culture and Development. So, culture is ways of living together according to this framework. Then, the World Commission on Culture and Development focused or laid laid uh, great emphasis on certain aspects. Okay, now, let us look at this slide here. For instance, it lays most importance not on economics, okay, not on productivity, on consumption, okay, not uh, even on all aspects of the cultural really. It laid a great emphasis on values right? and brought in things, abstract things, non-tangible things like values onto the discourse of development and insisted that looking at cultural values in all their pluralism or plurality okay, is should be at least brought center stage in any uh, discussion or any discourse on development. So, values uh, is something that was uh, you know um, that was emphasized by the world commission. Second, culture was not simply everyday practices, culture was not simply a way of living or even way of living together. Culture was called the catalyst for development. Look at the difference here. Okay? We usually talk about, you know, we, we think that there is something purely economic, purely infrastructural as far as development is concerned, but here culture particularly as understood as values, when understood as values is seen as a catalyst for development, it is seen as something that sets development uh, you know uh, on its on its um, uh, or development going. Next development is not seen as wealth, remember we had said that the mainstream discourse 
uh, often looks at development in terms of economic well-being, in terms of the wealth of nations, if you will. Okay? But in this case, development is seen not as wealth, but something that enhances the freedom of people. Okay? So, look at words like values, words like freedom. These are what have been brought to the fore or have been brought, these are what have been brought to broad center stage by looking at the importance of culture in development and that is the way in which we are going to look at um, uh, you know the um, a topic like development within cultural studies. And then this development okay, is an ethic, this development is an ethic that is culturally sensitive that is sensitive to different cultures to different cultural practices right so let's let's look at this again what have we have what are the keywords here the keywords in the uh, world commission uh, report on culture and development are values freedom ethics sensitivity okay usually things that do, are not center stage in a discourse of development so the scope again uh, as the commission declares the scope of um, studying development under the ages or under the framework of cultural studies may include things like culture as a right, okay. the practices of all communities, okay, all groups as a fundamental human right. So, culture is a right and as far as development is concerned, the issue of culture is something that has to be treated as a fundamental human right. Then cultural policy, okay, not just policies to do with uh, you know uh, do with um, uh, social welfare or economic welfare, but also clear cultural policies will, would have to be devised if you have to have development in terms of culture. Economic and social practices okay, and particularly the diversity and heterogeneity of economic and social practices are to be considered sustainable development of all communities of all cultures are to be honed are to be you know uh, the sustainable development policies are to be created okay uh, keeping in mind the culture of the people or the ways of living of the people and finally culture is to be seen as the environment for well being okay so culture so to speak is is uh, is not just not just a backdrop Okay, of development, but it is seen is to be seen as an environment okay, with which we interact right, in, um, uh, in, a, in almost a dialectic process okay, for well being. So, this is these are some of the ways in which the scope of studying culture within or oh sorry development and culture together may be worked out. Then we also come to Another uh, you know aspect which is given to us by uh, the practitioners of, of uh, development within the cultural studies framework and this is cultural practices as development. Look at this cultural practices not on their own, but practices are to be considered as development processes. Okay? Therefore, culture is to be seen as a mechanism. So, culture remember is then not simply a backdrop. It is also not also just an environment, but culture, cultural practices are to be seen as mechanisms okay? and uh, those cultural practices are to be tied to things like uh, things that are to do with, do with um, development for instance effective education, communication, empowerment and capacity building, right? all of the people. Okay? So, development that is people centric or people centered right so this aspect of development uh, as the critics have have argued may be met with only by considering cultural practices as mechanisms for development and when they are also people centric okay therefore what are the resources of this way of looking at what are resources uh, towards development as uh, as given by culture. Okay? So, we have so we've, by now uh, we have accepted the fact that culture is a part of development, the way of living and particularly heterogeneous ways of living, diversity, diversity the you know uh, practices singular to certain communities are things that we cannot 
neglect or avoid. So, what are the resources then in this case that culture can give us for development? The resources that culture can give us for development are these heritage, values, myths, beliefs and modes of expression. Now, if you look at this closely right, every culture would have a heritage. Now, by heritage we do not mean simply things that have come down to us or to any culture from antiquity. Okay. These are not things that are there are to be museumized or things that are of uh, you know value only to tourists. Okay. The heritage of a certain people um, lives okay, lives on in their day to day practices, the day to day uh, in the day to day activities for instance. Okay. So, it is not removed from their present or their everyday lives. Same the same with values right, every culture, every community, every group okay, has a certain set of values which have uh, which have been entrenched okay, in them with which they live and where it particularly in this case there can there is usually no, no uh, universality. There may be some universal you know values a very very few universal values for instance, but values are also culture specific right. So, uh, the next is myths again myths are not to do only with you know uh, you know some storytelling or some narratives about prince and princesses and gods and goddesses. They are everyday myths everyday things that people live by which again are very dear to them. Okay. Then same with beliefs right same with beliefs uh, regarding the universe the same uh, with beliefs regarding to life on uh, earth right life uh, as we live here and different modes of expression modes of expression vary from one culture to another so instead of you know looking at these as liabilities or instead of sort of brushing them you know uh, pushing them under the carpet and pretending that these things are not important pretending that these things are uh, you know to do with very superficial aspects of a culture and that only the economic is the most in, you know in economic activities are sort of the bedrock of culture is to ignore a very important component of culture. So, studying or looking at development from a cultural studies perspective you know particularly as given to us by say the world commission on culture um, and development or you know so many critics who have alternative who have to offer alternative disc, uh, discourses to the mainstream economics based uh, discourse of discourse of development okay they insist that let's turn these so called uh, peripheral things into this is the word here into resources of development okay so development policies should be um, you know should be created or established keeping in mind these so called or hitherto called um, peripheral areas of development. Therefore, this is very beautifully put by a critic people matter. Okay. Uh, you see all these things that we have been discussing so far are to do with people. For instance, what are the things that are to do with people? Okay, is living together culture as a way of living together. Okay, then resources talking about different resources that people have as a as a collective as a community. Then talking about effective communication, right? Talking about capacity building. Okay, values. All these things are people centric. And if if uh, and uh, the critics here claim or the proponents of the school of thought claim that bring people center stage. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the whole discourse of development cannot do without putting people first and hence it is not simply again that people matter, it is also that people come first. So, where would we then if we, if we had a, uh, if we did take up policies based on this sort of argumentation, okay, then where would be, where would these be applied? Now, some of the, the areas, a few areas in which this application can be done are for instance human rights, are issues of governance, of environment, of marginalized groups in conflict situations and health. And again if you, if you look at this all of these right, what are these doing? All of these are 
only reiterating the fact that people matter or that people come first. It is obviously human rights okay, where people matter, governance, environment, studying the environment and uh, you know applying theories of culture and development to the environment to marginalize groups, groups are that are not considered uh, you know the dominant groups and hence sometimes are often often ignored. Okay. Uh, marginalized groups, conflict situations, in situations of war, in situations of terrorism, in situations even of migration, of refugee situations. Okay, these are uh, these. If these are not brought to brought center stage in the discourse of development, then a huge chunk of the population is left out. Okay, then the development is not meant for everyone. And finally, health for all. Right. So these are the areas in which. If you are arguing for development from a cultural studies perspective, okay, these are the areas which you would bring, uh, bring forefront, bring to the forefront in the discourse. Next, uh, we I had mentioned Vincent Tucker, and I had said that Tucker is one of uh, the most well known or one of the better known uh, scholars as far as the alternative discourses to. Uh, development goes and uh, I will refer to his essay which I have talked about the myth of development and we will see how development is imagined okay, according to Tucker, how development uh, is imagined and how we have to counter or we can counter okay, and we should counter the dominant uh, ways of imagining development. Tucker says here development is not a natural process. I think an immensely important um, statement to make. Okay. Development is not a natural process, development is not a teleological process, okay. development is does not happen naturally, development is something that is constructed whose policies are decide, decided by real human beings living in real time. Okay. So, it is not something that is God given or even a process of uh, pro, uh, process of uh, or physical process of nature. Okay, so it is very important for us to remember when we look, when we critique the dominant discourses of development from a cultural studies perspective that development is not a natural process; it is man-made. Then the next point, he says that there is a mythology. There is a dominant mythology of western beliefs. Now, by mythology here we are western mythology, we are, we are not referring to things like Greek mythology and Greek gods and goddesses. Okay. We are referring to certain myths which are uh, you know for instance which may be the enlightenment myth of development along a linear process, okay, along an uninterrupted process uh, of uh, you know um, a sort of a forward unfolding okay, of development processes. right? This is tied to point number 1, such a way of looking at development as something that would unfold by, by you know uh, over time in a teleological manner is a natural uh, you know uh, making a fallacy here, it is a natural kind of na um, you know naturalistic kind of mistake we are making here. Okay? So, uh, it is the myth of certain western beliefs for instance again uh, the unfolding of time in the traditionalist framework, if you remember, okay, through which makes the mistake, which is responsible for the mistake we make in believing uh, development some, as something that is natural. Third, development is not a transcultural concept that can claim universal validity, that there is no universal validity. Okay, you have to accept the fact, you have to recognize the fact that development, the main discourse of development okay, is one that is deeply infused or informed by western beliefs okay, about time, about progress right? and it is not on it and it cannot be a transcultural concept. That is it is it cannot be a concept that can be applied, applied to all cultures over time and space. Okay. It is not a transcendental concept that, that, that you know uh, transcends uh, all barriers of culture and time and space. Okay. So, this whole idea of development as is imagined in the western framework as Tucker says is one that is uh, that mistakenly holds that 
uh, uh, d development as they understand it can be applied unproblematically across time and space across different cultures and that they ha that it has a universal validity it does not it is let's read on a specifically western myth and many languages have no equivalence very interesting okay the development is a word is a vocabulary in the english language okay and tucker points out uh, that we think that development is a universal concept, but the fact is the interesting fact is that there may be many languages in which the word development does not occur. There may be synonyms, but it, uh, but there is no uh, you know word that can stand for the kind of development that the main that the mainstream processes look at. Next such myths or shared beliefs play an important role in mobilizing the energies okay, for social reproduction and in legitimizing the actions of the believers. Look at this, these myths, now the, the better way to put it is he's put as he put, puts it here is shared beliefs, okay. myths are shared beliefs, I said nothing to do with gods and goddesses of the past. Uh, these shared beliefs Tucker says plays and uh, these beliefs play an important role in mobilizing energies for social reproduction and in this is important legitimizing the actions of the believers those who follow the mainstream myth okay they feel like right that their policies okay their ways of looking at so called developing or underdeveloped Okay, now, all these words are now to be put within single, uh, you know, within the inverted commas because they are now problematized. The whole idea of developed, developing, underdeveloped countries is again perhaps a myth. Okay. So, but Tucker says that why do uh, these people uh, who have, who make such policies based on these so called myths or shared Western shared beliefs, okay, how do they have the power to do so? Right. The, the answer here is that because they are shared, they are shared so deeply not only in this is important not only in the developed so called developed world, but also uh, many many people belonging to the developed so called developing and underdeveloped countries okay, nations they too share these collective myths about development being what development being a natural process where every country has to uh, you know unfold its so called development uh, within or within within the discourse or within a certain template that is given to uh, to us given to the world by only a certain shared a set of shared beliefs to follow okay and this is the kind of mainstream thinking that critics arguing from a critical development theory perspectives or a cultural studies perspective okay, would say would, would begin to kind of uh, to would begin to critique very very severely and they would then say that uh, they would also point to the fact for instance that there is even there are even no, uh, you know cultures languages where the term development uh, is not there in their vocabulary. Next, I am reading again from Tucker and I'll, I shall explain it in a while. Tucker says in his essay, development as a practical and intellectual project has been steeped in optimism okay, as both a practical and an intellectual pro project. Okay. Again, optimism is, is uh, this kind of optimism at least, uh, a kind of optimism that is un you know is unproblematic or is a kind of optimism that does is you know um, a straightforward sort of optimism okay that all nations are going to develop in a certain way okay so he says that uh, such optimism informs both the practic practical aspects okay and the intellectual the thinking process that goes into development and understanding development and development policies then he says yet after more than three decades of development, many areas look at this many areas of the world are worse off today. Okay. So, after more than 30 years of understanding development, 
of imagining development okay of devising development policies more than 30 years have passed of this way of thinking but there are today still many areas as he says of the world that are worse off today than they were 30 years ago despite development programs and aid. You see if you there is for instance he gives an example here he says millions of Africans suffer and die from starvation and malnutrition today despite development programs and despite aid problems uh, pro, uh, programs. Okay. So, there is definitely something wrong and uh, in this this way of doing development okay. and Tucker and the rest would there point out that which means that you have tried to develop countries, you have tried to develop areas of the world that are still starving today and you failed there. Why? Because you have imposed your shared beliefs without giving importance to what and this is where culture comes in without giving in importance to the resources of the people. Remember what were the resources of the people to be brought in in a you know cultural studies understanding of development. These were values. Okay. These were their um, you know myths that are peculiar or singular to, to uh, each and every culture. Okay. These are some of the uh, ways in which you have to you have to weave the process of development. Okay. Where development is not only economic development, development is more importantly cultural development where people matter. Okay. So, in face in the face sorry of such failure deterioration sorry this is deterioration and destruction Tucker says we cannot persist in talking about development as the harbinger of human emancipation. This is a very strong statement he is making here. He is saying that there is too much evidence okay? there is too much evidence by those areas of the world which have not at all been helped by 30 years or more of development programs and practices and you know of um, giving aid to those nations. He says in the face of such failures and which he says which he calls deterioration in the face of such deterioration and destruction as he puts it we can no longer cling to the fact that or he says we can no longer persist in talking about about this idea this way of looking at development this term development even okay, as something that is going to bring in human freedom, human dignity and human liberation there is something else. So, the whole the, the call here is, is of course, not to throw development or that, that we do not want development, but to raise very important alternative questions like what do you mean when you say the word development. Okay. You have to admit the fact that development can never be a transcultural concept, not simply because it is not available in some in the vocabulary of some languages, not simply at that level. Okay. It is at the level of how you understand intellectually, remember how you intellectually you understand development, imagine development and practically how you devise development policies, all these things need to be looked at to be relooked with. Uh, with a very radical uh, uh, eye, with a very radical disposition, okay? and because of the fact as Tucker says that these development uh, you know policies and programs have failed as he says miserably okay, for some countries. Next the other word problematic word here is modernity, right. We uh, if teleology enlightenment thinking uh, if reason these are some of the important keywords in the dominant discourse of development and equally if not more important keyword is modernity. Okay. Like we uh, question the term development right, uh, we have also to question the term modern. What is modern? What is it? to be modern okay is modern the same for all cultures or that is like some people have tried to make it uh, as with development is modern or can modern ever be a transcultural concept okay so let's look at this modernity and its discontents as given to us by uh, the uh, the critics of the mainstream discourse they say that there are various modernities and not a single modernity. We have to accept the fact that what is modern 
for the western world need not be modern for world that are regions that are not uh, western okay so being modern has different contours has different nuances has different um, uh, descriptions excuse me <coughs> descriptions and definitions okay all over the world so one of the things to understand is like development uh, modernity is not a homogeneous term. Next, the enlightenment is itself the outcome, a historical configuration which owes much to the Islamic world of scholarship and science. Okay. Now, you have to again understand that this enlightenment that we have talked about which we is celebrated as a western gift so to speak to, uh, to entire mankind is so something to which the Islamic world has also contributed to its scholarship and science. Okay. So, segregating the western world from uh, you know the, the rest of the world again is problematic here. Okay. So, again point number 3 various components of modernity often diverge or form new configurations. This is, this is again important. Okay. So, there are modernities then okay. and uh, different components of modernity right, will come together and in different times in different regions of the world will make or we will create new configurations. So, A you cannot have a concept called modernity in the first place, okay. you would have to replace it okay, with modernities, not simply because modernity is different everywhere. Also, as the last point mentions it here, okay, the components uh, of modernity uh, will form different configurations also in the same region over time, so that modernity cannot be homo, you know, understand, understood homogeneously also in a temporal way. Okay. So, modernity as part of development is also critiqued by these scholars. Therefore, now that we have understood, right, we have understood that all these words are problematic development, enlightenment, modernity, reason, right, developing non uh, uh, sorry underdeveloped and developed nations. These are terms that belong to a discourse, but these are terms that need to be revised as many critics here would agree in, in quite a radical sort of a way. So, if we have to do this, then Tucker and others says, what are the strategies? How do we need to? How do we change ourselves? How do we change? Sorry, how do we change uh, our looking into or considering these things? How, you know, how do we reimagine, so to speak, development? If development has development has been imagined in a certain way, how do we uh, reimagine this? So these are some of uh, the strategies being given here. For instance, there is a need to democratize. Okay, in a very radical sort of a way, right? We all believe in uh, in democracy, but it should be a democracy where you know the resources, okay, where the resources of all culture cultures of all communities are given importance in in the process of development, right? Um, only then there would be true true a truly democratic process of development, okay. not, uh, not democratizing just a, a few sections of society, not democratizing only some classes or even in say India some castes, right? not uh, only including their resources, their cultural resources. Okay. It would mean including the cultural resources of all classes, all castes um, and all sections of society. Next important point or strategy is that there is a need to demythologize. Remember, we looked at the myth of development through Tucker, okay, and how is myth understood in this sense? Myth is understood as what? Myth is understood as shared beliefs, right? Remember, we talked about shared myth is not understood in the terms of stories of your of how, for instance. Uh, some god or goddess created the world, etcetera. Myth is understood um, as shared beliefs, even current, you know, beliefs currently shared. 
today as we sit here shared by uh, some of us right so um, there is a need therefore to demythologize ideas of development of progress ideas of what it means to have a good life for instance ideas of, of what it means for a nation to be a healthy nation do we look at it only from the point of view of economic uh, well well being uh, also to demythologize what things like resources mean okay is uh, you know is um, the wealth of a nation simply uh, uh, put uh, uh, is it the resource that we are talking about are our resources to do with values with ideas of freedom with ideas of uh, you know uh, equality democracy etc so concepts then need to be demythologized in the sense that the word development has also develop, developed a myth around it okay so we have to demythologize even the word development okay next he says that there is there is a, a need to deconstruct there is a need to deconstruct um, you know the dominant discourse okay this there is a need to uh, to dismantle the dominant discourse of development right and even in a textual sort of way okay in a even in a deridian sort of way to lay bare the way in which the whole discourse works with the use of words right the, the discourse of development is a very powerful one words get get thrown around everywhere and people consume those words often uncritically all this can be done finally only if what is called uh, with what what we have uh, only when we have sorry uh, what is called the critical gaze here gaze is a critical look not of course, just a look of course, the critical looking or critical looking into issues of development. Okay. Uh, in fact, even a radical re look at the issues of development. Okay. So, uh, quickly uh, just a, you know spending a minute with Bhikkhu Parekh as I said, because he has this important document called a commitment to cultural pluralism and I uh, will quickly read just a, a sentence and two from, from here. All societies today are culturally heterogeneous in different degrees and thanks to such forces as industrialization, the easy mobility of goods and people and the global reach of the multinational media, members of even the most traditional and isolated societies are daily exposed to new ways of life. Right? And finally, a cultural, culturally homogeneous society whose members share and mechanically follow an identical body of beliefs and practices is today no more than an anthropological fiction. Okay. It says because of, of uh, you know because of the media because of you know the easy reach of people and the easy way to, to highlight their cultures to study their cultures and to, 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 to uh, you know to know about other people has today proven that it is impossible Okay, uh, in rather it has never been the case rather okay, that, that there is a culturally homogeneous society that he calls an anthropological fiction. And then he says that these are some of the ways in how, uh, ways how we go about it and how we look at development anew. These are they have to be these things political and methodological commitment okay, to, to, to development in a real sense. Multicultural education there has to be multicultural national symbols national symbols cannot belong to either one caste or a class, then an understanding and appreciation of a truly multicultural society. Okay. And also multiple or double or even multiple descriptions of societies of, de of ideas of development, they may, which may be mutually conflicting. And mutual criticism and mutual correction and openness to correction and cultural and constitutional experiments. He said and all these if you realize that Parekh is offering us is with you know an understanding as I said a commitment to pluralism understanding that the world indeed is uh, more plural than we can ever imagine or have ever imagined. So, if you get a question like how does the world commission on culture and development view culture then you would say that it is uh, culture is viewed as ways of living together not simply as ways of living as we have understood in the past and values freedom. Uh, a development ethic, cultural sensitivity, okay, these are to be given equal importance if not prime importance and culture is to be seen as a catalyst okay, for the development process. 
Second, if you get a question like this, how is culture a resource for development, then you have to say that these resources are people's resources. Okay? It is a framework in which we say that people matter and what we get from people from a community are these their heritage, their values, their beliefs, their modes of expression and their myths. These are things that have to be considered within the framework of development. If you have to have true development where people come first, then you cannot do away with, with you know cannot do with the, with, away with the beliefs, the values that people have lived by or lived with for so many years. Just because they do not tally with the uh, you know, so called dominant or some would say western beliefs of what uh, you know beliefs about the world, about development, about various concepts etcetera. Okay? If you want to have true development, then that would have to go. What we need is culturally specific values, myths and modes of expression, beliefs etcetera. Finally, describe brief, if you get a question like describe briefly Tucker's arguments on development then you would say that Tucker was, Tucker's essay is important, his work is important because he has shown us the way we have always subscribed to a certain imagination of you know uh, way of imagining rather way of imagining development, where development is based on western concepts, on western beliefs, where development is seen as a natural process, where also as Guha and Schwartz have shown, shown before uh, sorry that um, development of the under developments uh, sorry, of, of some nations, the so called under development is the re result of a certain economic and social belatedness that the present is always elsewhere in the developed nations. We are always catching up with or some countries are always catching up with the developed nations. This is a completely false way of looking at a completely biased way of imagining what development is and he says that once we imagine what development is only then uh, you know in the right way only then can our policies change. Then um, there a plurality of discourses if you have to have development by rehabilitating the answer you know the idea of culture as also Bhikkhu Parekh have, has said there has to be a plurality of discourses, there has to be an understanding of multiculturalism of a understanding that audiences are plural, they are never homogeneous okay? and it should be anti totalizing and there has to be common grounds of assembly. As we saw again with Parekh, the multicultural society, multiple descriptions, right, mutual criticism, a commitment to pluralism, all these are important. Right? So, um, as I said in the beginning, I would like to again end by saying that development is a very loaded term right? and this the, the, the recent you know further loading of the term development has come about with the critique of the term development, okay? with the radical the critical gaze that has been given to, to this term by so many culturally sensitive, uh, so many uh, critics who, who consider it a duty you know um, an ethical act to criticize the dominant mode of development. Remember what was said a while ago when millions of people are starving after decades of the 30, 40 decades of development definitely we need to look at development from another perspective, from a new perspective. And cultural studies looking at development gives you uh, at least one of the new perspectives of looking at development where you consider culture as a way of living together, particularly in today's world living together with commitment and with appreciation of multiculturalism and plurality. Thank you for now.